I'm Allison Greer. Uh, as you know, we've met a few times in Iran. I'm the executive director and the founder of the nonprofit organization, If Americans Knew. We work to give Americans the facts about Israel, Palestine, and related issues. And um, I had the opportunity, the wonderful opportunity, to visit Iran a few times and give lectures around the country at different universities about my subject matter, which is Israel-Palestine. That, that was my first trip to Iran. Then I was invited to the New Horizon Conference that took place several months ago, I guess, was it a year ago now? Uh, a while ago. A very interesting, eclectic mix of people from different countries all over the world, different religions, different philosophies, um, with certainly sometimes probably maybe maybe very different views on many issues, but all with, with one thing in common, which was support for Palestinian human rights. It was a conference about Jerusalem and about Palestine. So the one thing that all of the attendees had in common, it appeared to me, was that we were all committed to human rights and to justice for Palestinians. Apart from that, I think of political philosophies may at times have been very different. So it was interesting to be in such a, an unusual gathering. That's, that's my, my own personal knowledge of New Horizon Conference, that it seemed to have gathered people um, from many different ideologies, some of them probably conflicting. There were a few times when there were heated discussions with people having different views, which seems to me a healthy thing for us all to do. So I was very disturbed when I saw that the U.S. Treasury Department, the Office of, um, Office of Foreign Assets Control, an office I had never even heard of before, but now looking on Wikipedia seems to be a very powerful part of the Treasury, but most Americans have probably never even heard of it before, issued a press release, it called it, although it's the strangest press release I've ever seen because it's really almost impossible to decipher. And press releases are supposed to be news reports that tell people what's going on. But I'll read the first sentence, if you can even call it a sentence. It's really not even proper English. Uh, but that is the reason I'm doing this interview tonight. It said, press release, Treasury sanctions Iranian organizations and individuals supporting intelligence and cyber targeting of U.S. persons. February 13, 2018. Today, the U.S. Department of the Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control, OFAC, designated an Iran-based entity that organizes international conferences that supported the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, I think it's QODS forces, IRGCGF, efforts to recruit and collect intelligence from foreign attendees, including U.S. persons and four associated individuals. And you and your wife are two of those four associated individuals. Now, I had to read this sentence several times because as you know, since you're fluent in English, designated, usually you designated, you designate something to be something. But this is sort of, has no, no object to it, it's just designated. So if, to the average American, which is what I am, the sentence has no meaning. We don't know what it means. But in researching it, apparently designated means that these are people of uh, concern. If you, you know, again, I was looking it up on Wikipedia, which is not always a reliable source, of course, but it's a good place to start. So apparently it's individuals that the Treasury Department designates that um, Americans are not supposed to have dealings with, I think financial dealings. I guess that's what designated means. Um, hopefully talking to you on Skype does now make me one of those people that they, that in this, in this document, it does warn, in addition, 
persons that engage in certain transactions with the individuals and entities designated today may themselves be exposed to designation. So whatever designation is apparently, you are designated, and perhaps I will be designated because we're talking by the aid of the internet while you're in Iran and I'm in the San Francisco area. So let me ask you uh, about New Horizons Conference that has been designated, what the yes. philosophy is, um, what its background is. I think you're the main founder and organizer of the conference. Why did you do that and what is it? Yep. Thank you so much, Alison. It's an uh, honor and privilege to speak with you. We are very happy to have you as our guest twice. I interviewed you in my um, weekly live show on television uh, years back, and I remember it was so I was happy to have you on because you of what you've been doing in the states, your book uh, that has been published many times, your background, you come from a sort of military family that was interested in that. And I wanted to the Iranian audience to know what else is going on in America besides what we see on CNN. <laughs> so this is the purpose of having um, the New Horizon Conference and also my weekly show, which has been going on for years. Um, and in that show, many times, about uh, at least a quarter of the time, I've been inviting Americans to speak live on the show so the, American, the Iranian audience gets to see what is going on, see some different perspectives, uh, and also see the vitality of the alternative media uh, and the fact that things have changed in the U.S. Uh, due to uh, the aggressive policies of the war mongering. There, there, there are legitimate, vital citizens of the U.S. who react to this and are not subordinate uh, to um, what the policies are that have created so much havoc here in our region. So, basically, the philosophy of New Horizon was, besides uh, inviting our guests onto shows, which were always and usually live, to have them come in person to the country and visit Iran and um, see this demonized country for the past decades, how it is and uh, let them participate in a free-form um, conference in which they'll see a lot of other guests from many different parts of the world, like themselves, free movers, free thoughts, and then after those few days be able to travel through the different provinces in Iran and be invited to universities and be able to speak to students and experience it's um, what Iran is today, because you will never understand what it is through the mainstream media. The mainstream media, the, the corporate media in the U.S. Uh, paints a very different picture, and I, I was very aware of that. So I was very honored through these years to have uh, these varied guests, and everything, of course, as you know, everything is very unclandestine about our conference, very open, very transparent. Everything is recorded as you all speak, and uh, uh, the, then you're interviewed by different medias in Iran, and they go to the provinces. Nobody has any control over the questions they ask you. Nobody controls what you say to them. This goes on for about a week and a half, and then our guests go back. I was the one behind this thing. I, I, was, I was very privileged to have this honor. This is an NGO that has a hard time getting enough money for uh, sponsors for every uh, individuals conference that we have. Many times we're in debt for many months and sometimes many years to pay back the money that we have to spend for that conference by itself. But of course, I knew that there'll be a limit. Uh, I'll be limited sooner or later. Somebody's going to clamp on. And um, this is what happened. Uh, that it was predecessed by detaining Mazia Hashemi from Press TV. And uh, after she was released, uh, about maybe um, 15, 20 days later, on February 13th, the sanction was slapped on. 
and uh, just uh, two or three days later after the very strange press release uh, that relates us to different weird things like weapons of mass destruction and uh, things that do not concern us and being related to IRGC or goods, which is completely unrelated. Um, and then uh, use the, this, the name of this woman, Monica Witt, which was never uh, a formal guest of ours. We never asked for a visa for her. We, she was never a guest because she was never an intellectual that would be interested to invite. She was already in Iran in 2012, where she attended a, a conference called Hollywoodism. And um, she was a walk-in participant, but the way they reflected it was as if we had recruited her. That, and then they said... Let me just ask, so Monica Witt, um, I just came across her after I saw this, this um, announcement, that Monica Witt, uh, as I recall, um, is, is an American who had been in the Air Force, I believe in the intelligence field, and then seemed to have been a whistleblower against some abuses that she experienced of various types. Yes. And eventually, I'm just doing this from having looked at this very quickly a while ago, uh, then apparently did come to go to Iran and did convert to Islam. And, uh, and now it's being alleged that she has given classified, she had access apparently when she was in the U.S. military, she had access to classified information. So now the allegation is that she has given that to the Iranian government. I'm not sure if there's evidence for that or anything yeah. about it, but they're trying to connect her to new, yes. new horizons. But you're telling yes. me that you never, she was not an invited guest, you did not bring no. her to Iran. No, uh, of course, because all our guests go to the foreign ministry of Iran. We make a request. She has to be someone who has written a book, who has written an article, she is, she is a person who has spoken in different venues. She's well-known. She's a world figure. She's known either nationally in the U.S., among the alternative media, or internationally. She didn't fit any of those. And I'm not interested in anybody who's clandestine anyway. And at the time when she participated, and she gave, I think, a 10-minute speech on Wall Street movement, I asked, who is she? And they said, she's, uh, she's a guest of one of our, uh, one of our uh, Iranian guests, and uh, this is back in 2012 uh, at that time, and I was not actually the chairman of the conference at that time, and it was called Hollywood. So that's, that I, I saw her, and she, uh, she was there, and we never again uh, saw her. I never sat down with her. They told me that she should be an interesting person to interview for my weekly show, but I was not interested because I never saw her write anything or make a proclamation of who she is and how she converted and what she's all about. And uh, uh, frankly, I, I didn't take, pay attention to her. Uh, then, um, of course, and of course, we had never invited her because we invite people to the foreign ministry and then they have to go to the visa clearance. Um, and then uh, after that, uh, we can have to go, we go to getting her a plane ticket and getting her a booking for a room. None of those has, has ever happened for her. So this, this is an accusation they made. And based on that, they said we, we have been recruiting others too. And we've been recruiting these Americans uh, for our own intelligence, which is as shallow and as idiotic as I can imagine anything can be. Uh, and for them to get away uh, to make a gullible audience swallow this, is I know the nature of the beast. I know what they've been doing for these all these years to make Iran look like the most dangerous nation on the earth. Uh, and that was always one of my incentives, to have Americans come into our country and see for themselves and walk around. And that's why I came up with the concept of after the conference, let them be invited to different universities and speak and be out of Tehran, where, where I have no control. They can be there and ask anything they want and the people ask them any questions. So this... This press release and this condemnation they have made against us is because of this very reason. They don't want this to go on. They don't want an alternative view of what is going on in this part of the world and the other guests that come. The networking among our guests has been amazing. 
you come and then you see Philip Geraldi, you see Peter Van Buren, you see Rabbi Weiss, you see uh, Akbar Muhammad of the Nation of Islam, um, you see maybe uh, people that you, you, you've read their articles before but you never saw them close up. You see Scott Bennett, you see uh, Lauren Booth from England. And I thought this was great and this is the forum we continue on having every year. I try very hard to convince the Iranians to support me, uh, different government agencies to help me do this. Many of them don't understand this because they're not international. They haven't been outside of Iran. They don't know the, uh, the level of the demonization against Iran. So, um, but this is the policy and the concept and the philosophy of New Horizon. And that's why they wanted to clamp it down because they don't want this venue at all. They don't want Americans to come here and find out what is really going on, especially this past one last May, when when you were there, we, we had some pretty high level of former officials and whistleblowers. Uh, we were so honored to have Philip Giraldi of the CIA. We were so honored to have Michael Malouf of the Pentagon, Scott Bennett from the De Defense Department, both huge whistleblowers, Peter Van Buren, uh, who wrote a very fascinating book about the rebuilding of Iraq and a very sarcastic satirical book uh, that he wrote. Uh, we were happy to have uh, Michael Springman, who wrote the book Visa for al Qaeda, uh, a great uh, member of the State Department. And I think they were very intimidated by the fact that former officials came to Iraq. And I was very happy that it happened. And the new guest list was what intimidated even more. We had, we had even more former officials come in. And um, so they, they could demonize myself, my wife, and the New Horizon Conference in many other ways because of these reasons. They don't want, basically, they don't want major whistleblowers to come to Iran and talk about what's going on. And so they use Monica Witt, the complete unknown person in my conference realm, as saying he is uh, recruiting these Americans. Uh, and this is how ridiculous and shallow uh, the uh, press release and condemnation is, but they're successful. They they have stigmatized us, and uh, also our guests are limited. Of course, they expect that uh, I sit down and be very passive about this. That's uh, it's not going to happen. Uh, we're going to. This is not. This is. We should not be passive about this. Thing. We should not be quiet uh, and salient about this, uh, because uh, we have a right to speak. The people of the world have a right to speak. No, no one should be intimidated by the neocons. The neocons blindly uh, are supporters of starting wars. And this is, if you can stop the conference that allows people to come and see each other and talk, they've taken a major step. And we, if we remain quiet, we have given them the benefit, and uh, they will continue doing it. Um, so this is the first step they took. It's the first time a conference has been uh, limited, has been confined, has been sanctioned, uh, Executive Order Sanction 13224. Also, the uh, first time that a person my, my, like myself, a filmmaker, uh, uh, has been um, sanctioned, uh, equivalent to a weapons of mass destruction for soon. Uh, uh, equivalent to somebody as the head of one of these ISIS organizations. Um, this, the heaviness of the accusation is also very interesting. And the American people, especially those who have participated in the horizon, should know the degree uh, and the caliber of the condemnation, and they should uh, realize that this is exactly what they don't want. They don't want, us, they want, they don't want you to come again to Iran. They don't want uh, other important uh, free uh, speakers and free thoughts uh, to come to Iran. It's good to be able to speak and think and write in America and also in, in the world, but to in actually, in person, come to a country. This is where a person changes completely when you really see what happens uh, when you come to this country and realize uh, what the reality of this country is, good or bad, I mean, uh, and they value. were successful in this.
I think so. There's such value in, in going different places, meeting people, seeing things for, for yourselves. And I think there is a real effort. I've, I've been working on this issue now for 18 years, as you know. And I think there's a real effort to divide Americans against people from the Middle East, against Palestinians, Muslims, Arabs, Iranians. Uh, I remember a very knowledgeable former uh, Foreign Service officer who was an ambassador, Ambassador Andrew Kilgore, a very distinguished gentleman. And he said that there was a great effort to make um, Arabs and Muslims fear and hate Americans and make Americans fear and hate Arabs and Muslims. And that's what's been going on. So I think the fact that your conference and other types of things of this sort, where people get a chance to meet one another, talk, maybe disagree, uh, is always valuable. We, we know that's an, an important thing to do. I grew up in, yes. the, in the 50s. I remember during the Cold War, um, at that time, the Soviet Union did not let their citizens leave, leave the country. Uh, as Americans, we felt that was wrong. We felt that, you know, there was a person to person type of diplomacy was considered important. I think that began with, with President Eisenhower. The idea of meeting one another, people from different countries, different backgrounds, meeting and communicating, seeing each other as human beings. Uh, it's important to do. I think most Americans believe we should do that. So this kind of targeting and attempt to make that impossible is, is very troubling, especially it, what the New Horizon Conference is very transparent. You know, from what I'm seeing, it was being broadcast. The, the things we were saying was being, were being broadcast. There were videos on YouTube of what different people had said. So it's, it's not some very secret kind of uh, gathering at all. It's, it's yeah. very public. Um, I was certainly yeah. very public about, having, about going to it and coming back and telling people I had been there, and I think everybody else was like that. Um, I think it's interesting that they're trying to demonize you to Americans because uh, you, as I recall, lived in the United States, <coughs> sorry, you lived in the United States for a period of time. You were, um, you went to college in the U.S. and you made, a, I think, a long, very long multi-part documentary about Jesus that's very respectful about Jesus and Christianity. Although you, you yourself are a devout Muslim, you seem to also have reverence for Jesus and for the New Testament. So I wonder if you could tell people about um, your childhood, the school that you attended, I think, starting from fourth grade and some of your background. Yes. Um, I went to a school that uh, at the time was, was uh, based upon a Presbyterian missionary school. Uh, it was a school called Community, Community School in Tehran. And uh, I had a very good childhood. Uh, I was very lucky that my parents put me in that school, I met a lot of different Americans, a lot of different Iraqi Jews in my class, um, and um, I learned about the Bible uh, from uh, like in fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. I studied the Old Testament and the New Testament. I became very familiar with the, the songs that are sung in the church when I was in fifth grade. There's a, every day we had a chapel. And uh, I learned uh, the hymns from weird onward Christian soldiers to we are climbing Jacob's ladder more than an American would go to a Sunday school. <laughs> so I was very familiar with uh, the stories of the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. We had very good, very fine American teachers. Uh, my parents, uh, my father was uh, a general in the in the. Shaw's army. He was a major general. He was retired in 1964, forced retired, um, because of some disagreements he had with the Shah, and they forced him out. Of course, if you disagree with the Shah, you either get executed, you just get uh, exiled or laid away. And but was, we were lucky that he was he survived. Uh, uh, so I grew up with uh, some notions of what was going on in Iran. 
Um, my mother was a fine woman who taught at the American school. She taught English at the Tehran American school. So I had a, had a pretty good, uh, varied background. Uh, when I went to school, I went to Virginia first when I was 16. Uh, I finished high school in Virginia, then I went on to college. I went to uh, a small college, Methodist, the oldest Methodist college uh, in uh, in the U.S., in Ashland, Virginia, Randolph, Macon College, and majored in English. And I uh, went on to Columbia University uh, in the future. And then later on, I, went, I studied film. I became interested in filmmaking. Uh, when the revolution occurred, I came back. Um, so I had a very interesting background in the U.S. I, I, I saw five years of Virginia. I saw the good citizens of Virginia. I saw the good Christian citizens of Virginia. Many of them uh, kept me during Thanksgiving and Christmas vacations because uh, most of the students went uh, away from the dormitory and there was no place I could stay on campus, so they would be very kind. So I saw a, a lot of good Christianity in the U.S. and also before, and before the when my education, my background of my education in Iran is also, I, I saw a lot of good Christians. I know what the stable uh, believers are. And of course, when I came back to Iran at the time of the revolution, I supported the revolution. Uh, I love my religion, and my religion incorporates, of course, a lot of Christianity. We, we love and we cherish and we revere Jesus. And uh, his mother and uh, what not, what you, what you have in the Bible, we also have completely in the, in the, our holy book, Quran. So, uh, one of the, one of the projects I had in mind was doing a film about Jesus. Uh, it, it turned out to be the longest, uh, television series on Jesus, um, about 17 parts, which was broadcast several times here, was broadcast many times in Iraq and Turkey, uh, it was, uh, shown in so many Muslim countries. Recently it was shown uh, in Latin American countries. The version that was dubbed into Spanish was shown by Hispan TV for Latin America. Uh, it was dubbed in Caracas. This is not a documentary. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a featured story that has uh, a cast of a hundred actors and over a thousand extras. Uh, it took me three years to shoot it. I uh, shot it with, uh, based on film, cinematography, 35 millimeter. And that is my real profession. I'm a filmmaker. It was shown in the Vatican. It, was, it received the, the first award from Religion Today Festival in Italy and was shown exclusively in the Vatican. I was there. I was invited along with an entourage. Um, and they, they gave me the best prize for inter-religious faith. And so I take a lot of pride in that because I, I, I believe very much in the role of Jesus. Uh, at our time and in the future. Uh, so, when New Horizons conference started, I'd already done all of these. I've done my film, I've been to the Vatican, I've been, uh, but I, what, I, what I felt was missing and where I could contribute is preparing a forum for uh, Americans especially to be in Iran and to see what's going on. And I saw what America had become post 9-11. I saw a lot of awakening, a lot of illumination, a lot of expression, a lot of um, a reaction to the neocon takeover. And um, in 2006, I went to the U.S. and did a documentary for Press TV. There I met a lot of great people. I, I met Scott Ritter in New York. I, I saw uh, Seymour Hirsch presiding over that meeting. I met a lot of people traveling to the U.S., interviewed a lot of people in Columbia University, uh, um, and, and what year did a document in 2006. Was that? that was the last time I was in the U.S. I, I went there with a, a media visa, and uh, I interviewed, and I also showed my Jesus film in many different locations. Uh, I showed it in Los Angeles. I showed it, uh, I was invited uh, to a uh, Radio Fox program in, uh, I think, Austin, Texas, called um, Power Hour or Our Power. I don't know which one. Uh, and I, we had a debate or, you know, a discussion with an evangelical Christian, the head of the university there, the Southern Baptist University in Austin was, he, he had the program. 
And I was invited in, in that show, uh, it was a live show at that time. And I talked about my movie. The, the, the subject was, why would I make a film about Jesus? And they saw a 20 minute clip of the movie. There was a rabbi in the debate. Um, so I, I also showed the, the film in various mosques and churches in Washington, D.C. Uh, and that was just the film that had hardly been finished at that time. This is in 2006. Um, and I haven't, have, haven't been back to the States since then. I, I never got uh, my um, a, an American passport or a green card. Um, and I did, didn't get a chance to go back. But I made up for that by being the forum that invites the Americans and the Europeans to come to Iran and participate in this international forum and talk about what is going on, and each individual bringing with them their book, their ideas, and giving the Iranian audience a chance to meet these people in person and through the media. Uh, I thought uh, after my, my Jesus Project, which was trying to build a bridge between Christians and, and Muslims, uh, which I think Jesus is a great bridge. Jesus really is a great bridge. Uh, I thought the next important project is to bring them in in person. That's why I fervently pursued this project, New Horizon, although I was not really received very well in my, my own country. They never really found, understood why we should have this conference until, thank God, uh, the Treasury Department sanctioned me. Then they suddenly woke up to realize, well, this is really something that they've sanctioned him. So, so, the, I, 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 so you're saying the... Um the Iranian government wasn't really supportive of your conference? They're, they're, they're halfway. At one time, the Ministry of Culture supported us, but after the, this new government that came, this present government that has come, the first thing this present government did when they came into power is they sanctioned New Horizon. <laughs> this is very ironical. Before the their Treasury Department, uh, Mr. Zarif, uh, you know, he stopped our uh, New Horizon conference, and I had a media debate with him that it was none of his business to meddle with this forum of diplomacy. He, he can keep on to his uh, foreign ministry, and we keep on with our New Horizon conference. And, and eventually, after a six-month delay, we continue with New Horizon. So, actually, they didn't want these Americans to come to Iran either. They had their own agenda. They were they were sit down and and have their own uh, agenda. They're elitist also. They, they don't like these people to talk about 9-11. They don't like these people to come and talk about the intimidation by Israel. And that's why throughout these years, nobody from the foreign ministry in these past few years ever came to our conference. And this is what I criticized them loudly on Iranian media. Said, why don't you guys come down and sit? Sit and learn something from these Americans. But uh, there's been a sort of a uh, intimidation and rivalry between us, although at the end of the day, they did give us the visas. They did. Um, I did notice, though. I did notice yes, that yes. one time yes, it, yes. it took a very long time to get my visa. I, I yes, remember, yes, yes. Um, I, think, I think I just got it the day before I was supposed to depart. I wasn't sure I was going to be leaving. Yes, yes. So it's, they it, really, it's, yes, yes. They, I mean, they really dragged their feet in giving, giving you guys visas. It's really even sort of humorous because here we have the Treasury Department, or at least the office of whatever that, is, that office was, um, trying to sanction you, you because supposedly you work with the government to recruit and somehow <laughs> uh, you know, manipulate Americans. And yet certainly it was my experience that the government didn't seem very eager to support the conference, and that's what you're telling me now. Yeah. All you have to do is go to Tehran Times, the Iranian paper, uh, or Tehran News, other venues, newspapers, and just Google my name, New Horizon Conference, uh, and uh, Zarif, or Foreign Ministry, and find out which year it was sanctioned. We couldn't have a conference for six months, and there was a debate, uh, and I, I retorted back that it, it is none of the business of the foreign ministry to meddle with the New Horizon. This is enough proof, if I was going to make an appeal in the U.S. courts, 
for them to realize what the reality is, which they know already. They, they know the realities. But they want the public to imagine that we are this, uh, you know, this horrendous, gloomy, dark force in Iran doing these things. This is the image they want to portray and then uh, be able to stop the, you know, the, the continuation of this forum. Mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, clearly they're trying to, the, the U.S. is, um, some some portion of the government seems to be trying to stop it. I don't yes, know. Are you uh, are you going to try to hold the conference again? You know, do you think yes, I am. Uh, right now, I'm looking for uh, for for uh, sponsors to support me for my next conference. I've always wanted to have it uh, in other countries too. I'm trying to pursue that, um, and uh, either it's here or, or elsewhere, but. Definitely, I, I want to continue on uh, to to have it, and I think it has more meaning now. If before you were invited and you came, this time when you come, it'll be totally different. You're coming uh, with with this with this new awareness. Uh, yes, I, I I still don't have uh, the funding for my next conference, but I'm really working on to 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 get the funding. To have it in, in the not too distant future. I'm I'm wondering uh, how concerned you are though with this this new designation of you personally and your wife. Uh, are you do you feel that you're in some sort of jeopardy if you tried to travel out of Iran to other countries? Do you, you know would there be some concern that yes, you could, you would yeah. be seized? The, the way the way the uh, designated us, uh, it would not be advisable for me to travel. Actually, they don't want me to travel anywhere. Uh, and um, they've, they've used the highest order. It's an executive order. Uh, and you usually do that for the heads of uh, ISIS or al Qaeda. Uh, and I've been uh, e e equal to them. Uh, and um, so... Yeah, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to travel uh, to any European or to the U.S. or any other country that um, I was going to travel. And so they have. They have limited me and my wife. They, they, they have limited us, um, and that's the reality of it. That's, yes. That must be very hard. I know your wife has family. I think sisters yes, yes. and siblings, and I don't know. Perhaps yes, uh, my my wife's uh, house is in the south of Lebanon. It's been bombed twice by the Israelis, destroyed completely twice, decimated to the ground, and built again. So we have uh, we know the the temperament of the atmosphere. We know, uh, but um, we'll we'll see how we can manage to have her visit the family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is the sort of come into our very private lives. Uh, this is intimidation at its best. It has never happened before. She is the first woman to be sanctioned. Uh, and the, con the conference is the first uh, cultural forum to be sanctioned. Um, and so on and so forth. This is the very first time. And it shows who's at the helm at the Department of Treasury. And their new policy, and and they'll probably take more steps uh, in the future if we don't do something about it now. I'm sure about that. If we remain passive and silent I think, and sheepish um, about it, yeah, I, th I think Americans have a real danger of being too passive and silent about these things. Certainly, the yes. uh, the I was looking into the Department of the Treasury a little bit before calling you. And Stephen Mnuchin is uh, clearly a very strong Israel partisan. He went yes. to a conference in New York. And there are some videos of him. So there's no doubt he's uh, he grew up in a Jewish family, and he his actions as an adult, especially attending that conference, are clearly he is a neocon, as you've been mentioning neocons for people. Any Americans watching this might not know, but neocons are largely I don't know in Mnuchin's case, but the, the classic neocon was a leftist, often a Trotskyist, 
who uh, then switched to become supposedly a conservative, that's why they're called neoconservative, largely yes. because of the, their partisanship towards Israel. They didn't like yes. that the liberal left was starting very minimally, but were starting to support Palestinian rights to a degree. So they moved over to the conservative part of the country and pretended to be conservatives. So they're called neocons, but they're really Israel partisans. And now many of them then started to switch back over and had endorsed Hillary. So it's a, a, a strange ideology that I think isn't very, very fully understood. Yeah. Let me remind you, uh, about um, a year ago, Oliver Stone was new on uh, participating in the film festival. And um, I, I had the good chance uh, to interview him and talk with him. Uh, and um, he was saying, he reminded me about the Michael Levine and the neocon uh, concept or, or philosophy of creative destruction. You know, creative destruction. When you, you when you think about creativity, yeah. you think about something positive. You think about God. You think about heaven, earth. You think about uh, what uh, what God has promised to the righteous, and etc. Uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. This is this is what creativity is in creation. But creative destruction uh, sounds very demonic, very satanic. And their policies are generally on that line. And they, a lot of these things that they do, look, they have these think groups, think tanks, all over the place. They sit down, and they have the MEK, which is a terrorist group, designated by the U.S. government for many years. It was lifted last, a couple years ago. They have the, the Iranian MEK as, as their arm, or as their active arm. They know who's doing what, and uh, what to do with next step. Uh, they, the the combination of Bolton and the MEK and today Pompeo is um, and to figure out ways to um, further demonize um, what they consider to be their enemy. Mm -hmm. And then based on a philosophy of creative destruction. So um, that was a very nice uh, reminder that uh, Mr. Stone told me about what is, what is going on. Uh, and the and the continu and continuous uh, policies on that same line. I never imagined a few months after that interview, uh, I'll be sanctioned person. Uh, and in line with what the neocons are doing. Uh, and th in this case, their creativity comes in sanctioning the only the only forum there was for. A networking of free thought and free movement about what is going on in the world. So they're very smart in getting this thing and nailed down. I mean, there was a, there was a sniper, so to speak, in the soft war, and they, they hit the target. And but they, they haven't only sanctioned myself or my family. They have sanctioned the, the conference, and they think that by intimidating us and calling us. Um, the possessors of weapons of mass destruction, whatever that means, I, I really don't know why part of my accusation is the WMD. Uh, and then also uh, recruiting American patriots. And what in the world is going on? Mm -hmm. And what I need uh, is somebody to explain to me what have I done to, to make them look, us, look at us as, as if we're so strong and so pervasive that they can put an executive order sanction against us higher than any Iranian general. This is what really baffles me, really. It is bizarre. It's, it's very bizarre. But it does play yeah, into yes. the, uh, you know, Iran, as you know, and people that have been really focusing on, on the strategy that Israel's been using, uh, Project for the New American Century. Yes, Before yes, that, yes. there was the, you know, an Oded plan of, a think tank and a strategic analyst who wrote a plan for Iran about the need to destabilize the entire region, to balkanize it. Uh, those those plans were already being written about by Ben Gurion. There was a there's a, a multi-volume diary by Moshe Shertak, who was a, an early Zionist, I think the second prime minister of Israel. In his the the 
portion, a small portion of his diaries were translated into English. And they describe how in the early 1950s, they were talking about the, the um, Israeli strategists, Ben Gurion in particular, about the need to target the surrounding nations, Israel's surrounding nations, to prevent them from becoming powerful enough or successful enough to support Palestinian human rights and to challenge Israel's ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian population. I've been working on an article about that. It's going to be a long one because there's a lot of information about it. But there has been this plan of divide and conquer and destabilizing the entire region. They specifically named Syria, Iran, and Iraq as three of the major ones. But also in the early documents, they were talking about other nations, Egypt, Lebanon. So this is, this is a strategy that's been around for a long time. And Iran now yes. is the country that wasn't. Iraq, of course, was damaged, was destroyed by these disastrous invasions by the U.S. Syria is in, you know, is largely, has been destroyed for a variety of causes. And Iran was the one left. So now it's being damaging, damaged by the sanctions, not yet by any military actions by the U.S. that I'm aware of, although Israel has assassinated some Iranian scientists. Yes. But Iran is the remaining place, and uh, there's a lot of focus on Iran. We've just, a, a documentary was produced, as I'm sure you know, by Al Jazeera about the Israel lobby, and then suppressed by the Israel lobby from being shown by Al Jazeera. But it was leaked, so it's available on the internet. We just made a one-hour yeah. abridged version. And what's interesting in there is that an undercover reporter, a Jewish young Jewish man from Britain, infiltrated some of the lobby organizations and filmed them. And some of them were specifically talking about their their plans to target Iran, to damage Iran. So, well, I guess it's been a long interview. I'm sorry it <laughs> hasn't been more professional. <laughs> I hope that no. I succeeded in recording it properly. <laughs> I, yes, I, yes. I hope this is my first attempt at doing this. But I really yes. appreciate your time. And there's, I, I just want to tell you personally, I've enjoyed meeting you and your wife and having a chance to spend time and have discussions and have a chance to meet people from very different backgrounds at the conference. I thought it was valuable. I didn't agree with everyone who was there. And that was part of the value of it, that, yes. you know, people could, could gather and, uh, and still talk to one another and, and learn a little bit about different perspectives. And yes. having the chance to see more of Iran was very interesting. Yes. Yes, I hope we can continue this venue. Uh, this is God's world and God limits people. Um, men can't limit and demonize. And I think that uh, we are really living in a very interesting era. We have a common front. What would bond you and us together? We have a common front. And uh, this is what they don't want. They don't want that common front. Mm -hmm. And uh, God willing, we'll continue this. We'll That's continue right. this. Inshallah, we'll continue this. And um, we, um, I thank you. I thank you for the, the steps that you're taking, further steps that you're taking. And uh, I wish you great success and uh, help by the grace of God. Thank you. And the same to you. And, uh, yes. you know, the, you, the majority of, of Americans, I think, uh, share my belief that. It's important for our nation to do the honorable thing, the, the proper thing, the practical thing. And I think eventually, hopefully, we'll succeed. And the portions yeah. of the government that are trying to do that, hopefully they'll succeed. And the portions yes. that are trying to do the opposite, I think will eventually, um, eventually will, will expose the damage that they're doing to our own yes. country as well as to other countries. So. Yes, I believe so. I believe so. Thanks very much. Okay, take care. Take care. Take care. Goodbye. God bless. Goodbye.